Welcome to today's episode of The Growth Zone. I am Christian Bartsch. What is the core benefit of listening to this show? Business leaders in corporate and privately held companies gain insights into trends and strategies that provide them with a competitive advantage in the marketplace. Each episode focuses on an area such as marketing, sales, innovation or funding that is absolutely critical to the growth of companies, whether they are startups or corporate global players, where management needs to juggle the challenges of market entry or knowing how to navigate the uncertainties of disruptive developments. Mind feeding is where clarity evolves and helps solving organizational challenges. For those who listen to the entire episode, I have a special surprise gift. I am working on some great guests that are industry leaders in management, innovation and marketing. Let's get started on today's episode. So, in today's episode, I have with me Dave Schneider. He is the CEO of Shortlist, that is a digital marketing agency. Who is Dave? Dave graduated from Harvard with a degree in applied maths in 2010. After two long years in corporate America as an analyst, he decided that life confined to a cubicle was not for him. In 2012, Dave quit his corporate job to travel the world with his wife and over five years they visited 60 countries and more. During that time, he launched and exited from his first SAAS business called Ninja Outreach. That was an influencer marketing platform. He then built and sold Less Churn IO and founded an agency called Shortlist IO. Nowadays, he runs that business as a digital marketing an agency which makes over $500,000 in its first year. His team of 20 are globally distributed and solve cool problems for their customers in a variety of industries and niches. He has been on dozens of podcasts and they are always a great time and value for audiences. So let's go and listen into the conversation with Dave on all the key important things around marketing in today's time. So today I'm here with Dave Schneider and we're going to talk about a really interesting and progressive topic. That's how to drive the health and wealth industry by using a marketing approach that gets business back on track. So before we go and uh, start our conversation, Dave, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Christian. So I uh, currently run a digital marketing agency called Shortlist.io. Uh, we specialize in the health and wellness industry, um, specifically e-commerce businesses, and provide them services related to growth, conversion rate optimization, design and dev, um, SEO, on-page and off-page. Um, I've been running that business for about two years. Um, prior to that, I had a software business called Ninja Outreach um, and did a lot of traveling as well, sort of a digital nomad. And so I've been kind of, I guess, doing entrepreneurship here for the last eight or so years. So you've seen quite a lot what's happening goes, goes ups and downs in the market. And especially since you're focusing on an industry that um, at the moment, I think many of us are looking for answers um, as well. It's quite an important thing. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, definitely a lot of uh, ups and downs, although, uh, uh, you know, the more recent ups and downs that we've had with the pandemic has been uh, uh, even more up and down than uh, than I'm used to. Uh, but it's definitely interesting times. Yeah, and when you think of it, uh, as you mentioned, um, things like CBD and all these other products 
Um, many, of course, many years ago, when you think of it like 10, 20, 30 years, many people didn't uh, believe in these things. And nowadays they've noticed that these products can be used in many areas to improve the lives of people who have um, any kind of issues in their health or so. And yeah, and if you combine it even then maybe with wellness things and other kind of stuff, you can really have a great life and still be, whether you're being an entrepreneur or a business leader or even somebody who is caring for the family and so on and has quite some physical or emotional challenges, things are the better if they are more progressive by using all these things. But of course, before they can buy the stuff, they have to know that it exists. And um, yeah, we want them as well to buy the stuff, of course, in the best way they can. Yeah, it, you know, like you mentioned, CBD, definitely an industry that's kind of exploding at, at the moment. And we're seeing all sorts of demand from CBD infused products, food products, uh, even for pets. You know, it's not even just uh, for humans uh, anymore. Uh, and, you know, a lot of uh, these topics are so new um, for uh, consumers like, like you and me that uh, there's a lot of uh, effort that needs to be spent into teaching uh, the consumer more about the product and the effects and, uh, you know, what we know scientifically about them. So if you ever go on, um, uh, you know, a, a, an e-commerce site for a CBD brand, for example, you'll typically see a lot of articles that are, you know, what is CBD and, you know, what are the effects and when is the best time to take this? And there's just so much territory that we don't really know about it, uh, that there's this kind of renaissance of, of learning going on. Yeah, and people sometimes have to have the right situation to experience what it can do. I experienced it some, I think in 2018, I experienced this well my first time. A friend of mine, he he has two brands. He's based in Texas and he has a product for, for shampoo for humans and horses, I think he's got a special product. And at the same time, he's got a second business that does as well CBD products. And it's quite astonishing, especially when you think when you're an entrepreneur and you sometimes have some challenging times where you have to take decisions and decisions <laughs> put you between two people and you think, oh, what can I do now? And your head starts spinning like a crazy, crazy computer. Then eventually uh, it drives you crazy and you get a headache. <laughs> and if the problem is really massive and you have to decide, okay, how do I solve this? Uh, the headache is really in your way. And I've seen how that can really, within five minutes, the whole thing, the headache was gone. And I was astonished. And uh, that's where you think, oh, okay, that's that's what it can do. And at that just small example, you can actually notice then what's theoretically possible in other fields. And that's that's really interesting because, of course, as you say, people first have to be educated so that they understand what can I do with the product? What's the value? Why should I take it or why shouldn't I take it? All these things. And as well, of course, keeping it simple that everybody understands without having to be a uh, having a PhD in biochemistry and, and medical appliance and science and all these other stuff. No rocket science. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I had a friend uh, the other day and he had like an elbow problem. And I said, well, what are you doing for it? And he said, it was like putting some CBD oil, some topical cream on it. Uh, whereas typically I'd always thought of that as just being something that you kind of ingested. And now it's sort of a topical cream. And they kept coming up with all these different uses for it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's kind of incredible to see the, the development in these different industries. Yes, and especially as well the marketing then as well, because of course all these products, uh, they're not necessarily right beside the buyer. So the buyer can be in some other state. They can be in, in um, for instance, they maybe are in New York, but the product itself is maybe in Texas, as example, or maybe in Florida or in Chicago or other places. Of course, people have to find notice it. And maybe they're even on the other side, maybe they're in Canada, Europe, whatever, Um I think it's it's getting the marketing out at the right way without expecting to have the the resources that maybe a big corporate can do for let's say selling cars or selling machinery or or ships or other kind of stuff. It's a quite different budget that you have as well available. Yeah, uh, you know, 
a lot of the companies that we work with, they don't have the the resources to do a commercial during the Super Bowl or something like that, or a commercial at all. Um, they are looking more towards uh, digital marketing, um, which is great for an online e-commerce business. It allows them to reach customers all over the country or, or potentially even the globe if they can if they can ship their products there. Um, and so they you know they need to get seen. Uh, so they're doing a lot uh, related to SEO and content marketing um, and social media as a way to, to get out there. Yeah, because as you say, social media and these things, there are of course certain barriers, especially for products that are related to CBD and, and health topics and so on. Um, my experience as well is that especially platforms like, for instance, Facebook and so on, they don't like that kind of uh, products. So it's um, advertising, they reject or they try then to eventually close accounts of these companies and so on, or even the agencies that are trying to help them to get clients. Um, it can be quite a challenge. So how do you go about these things for your people? Yeah, you know, you make a good point uh, in that there are certain uh, products and in, in industries that maybe are not allowed uh, to advertise on Facebook. I had a client recently uh, that was selling face shields and uh, Facebook was not allowing those to be marketed um, through their through their platform. I think just because there was just an explosion in, in that product and there was price gouging and there was sort of a panic going on and they just didn't feel comfortable with that, that particular product being advertised on their platform. So, you know, that really, uh, you know, that's a go-to marketing channel for a lot of, a lot of businesses. Um, and it's a handicap to not be able to, to experiment with it. Um, for us, I mean, we focus a lot on uh, inbound marketing. Um, so that's, you know, how do we get the business um, in the right place uh, at the right time. Because uh, if you think of paid advertising, you're kind of putting out ads to a lot of people um, and sort of hoping that somebody who sees it is going to say, hey, this is what I'm looking for, and they kind of click on it. Uh, whereas inbound marketing is kind of the reverse, and it's saying, hey, there are people that are looking for this right now, um, so how can we have them find us um, when they kind of search for us? So that's a lot of marketing uh well that's you know for the most part is, is google really it's the search engine that that the majority of people are using um and so you know uh our process uh often is starting with some keyword research you know understanding what are the what are the different um keywords that are viable uh targets for this business it might be something like um cbd oil drops or you know cbd infused gummy bears just like for example um and understanding whether or not uh, this keyword has you know uh, adequate volume and that the competitiveness is relatively low and that essentially this business can um, you know can rank for this and then uh, once we have that target in mind it's a combination of on-page and off-page seo to try to make that a reality the on-page work is often uh, tweaking the website uh, improving the performance making sure that the the keywords are present that it has a good kind of hierarchy and structure and the off-page elements are things like building backlinks and making sure that um, they're getting uh, authority uh, links from other sources other than their own. Um, and the combination of those two is, is what we see uh, kind of leads to the results, the rankings for those keywords. Yeah, absolutely. I'm currently as well working on one page uh, that hasn't got to do anything with this kind of industry, but uh yeah, you become aware when you have to do them as well in multiple languages and you have to adapt the text and everything. It takes takes some time and you have to take, of course, a lot of consideration what uh, is the right thing to do, especially if it's such a niche, niche area. And as you'd say, it's, it's as well commerce-based. Your clients do a lot of commerce. They are, they are shipping products in the end. Yeah, they, they, they definitely are, um, which is definitely, you know, it, it's a business model that I, I, I've been happy to sort of be a part of. Um, and I and I think that, you know, more and more people are buying products online. Uh, obviously, everybody kind of knows Amazon, but there are a lot of other, um, you know, basically e-commerce sites that specialize um, in these in these products. And just with, you know, the pandemic and everything, people are, you know, less likely to go out to stores. They're looking to do some shopping online. Um, and then also just kind of owning a storefront is expensive uh, in terms of rent and all those different types of things. And so I think we're kind of seeing this uh, emergence of, of e-commerce businesses. 
Yes, and as as you say, as well, people are looking for something. They don't want to go out. They may be fearful of uh, meeting other people and maybe getting sick themselves and so on. So they don't really want that. And they want maybe as well the convenience because you just ordered online and a few days later you get it delivered to your home. And yeah, you don't have to leave your home, especially if you are now um, home-based because you have to work from home. You don't have the flexibility. If your kids maybe at at home instead of school, you have some extra uh, issues to challenge. Or even if they're at school, maybe it's different times. So you you haven't got the uh, convenience of a normal, regular time schedule that we would used to have before the pandemic. So how do you get them actually to uh, work on their growth, especially as well to to boost things? Because if it's not enough happening, um, they might run out of money eventually. Yeah, uh, you know, the I think a lot of businesses they understand that uh, just putting up a website and having a product is is not enough. They need to invest in marketing. They know that they just don't you know know kind of how to do that and, and who to trust. Um, and that's sort of where we come in uh, to be that uh, that that marketing capability for them. Uh, of course, with each business, you know, you do have to be cognizant of what their budget is, what their means are, to make sure you don't kind of um, put them in a position of overspending too fast. Um, and certainly, uh, if they don't, you know, that results, even when done correctly, take time. Uh, so for example, the keyword ranking that I talked about earlier, uh, even if you're doing all the right things, it doesn't, you know, Google could take weeks or even months to react. Um, and so you have to sort of balance, um, all of those things, uh, together. Uh, but you know, luckily, uh, we're always very, uh, aware of, of uh, the customers that we work with and what their situation is. And we can kind of uh, differentiate um, those who maybe are on a tighter budget uh, versus others uh, and take that into consideration when we design the campaign. Yeah, that's that's definitely true because it reminds me several years ago, I had a business partner who I was helping out with his uh, dental clinics and he was... Uh, I think it was on page 10 or something on Google with his uh, websites and that. And so it took us about three to six months to get him actually in front on page one, partly even in front of his competition in some cases, which especially for for dental clinics, um, quite an important thing if you are traveling abroad to get your teeth done and you want to spend less than usually you'd have to do if you do it at home. It's quite a quite a challenge, of course, for people. But there's lots of opportunity, even if there's at least plenty of, um, let's say, competition there. Um, there's still quite a lot of opportunities in that. And um, as you said, you do as well wellness. Um, what can our listeners um, expect wellness to be in that description? So, uh, so what was that? Um, what kind of wellness companies do you have as ah, the wellness yeah wellness com- companies um well like i you know sort of i mentioned a lot of them uh they could be in the cbd niche which we've talked about uh quite a bit now but we've also have uh companies that are in uh fitness um and also like mindset and yoga um and uh, uh yeah yeah i would say those are those, uh, organic foods uh those those are all sort of the the, the common ones that we often see. And, and we like this niche uh, for a variety of reasons. Number one is that it's, it's sort of a, a, I guess, a concept or a trend that we believe in personally, um, you know, making the world a healthier place, uh, trying to be more, uh, you know, he- healthy in our own lives. Um, but also, uh, I think the added benefit is that we just feel that it's a growing, uh, growing niches um, that in the 21st century, um, there's just more, um, emphasis right now on the quality of, of products and you know what what it is that we eat and and also just kind of having a balanced lifestyle with you know yoga and meditation and and you know working out and things like that. Yeah, that's that's definitely the case because a friend of mine he I think he sold two years ago his business. He was selling yoga mats and other related products on Amazon and sold it I think for a two figure million. Wow. Some, which quite a good, and he's now doing some totally new kind of business 
obviously enjoying it. But uh, yeah, at first time I thought, okay, yoga mats on Amazon. Yeah, right, so, right. Yep, yep. <laughs> and he told me how he did it. And I thought, wow, very smart. Really, really good strategy because it's a different, different platform than if you're just running your own website and trying to be found on Google or Yahoo, Bing, Baidu, or whatever kind of platforms nowadays or at any time can be there. Um, so, uh, for instance, like the organic food, um, that usually is, is that usually a really very regional business? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, it depends on the product and, and sort of the shelf life and the expiration of it. And there are certain uh, maybe organic food products um, like a powder or something like that uh, that we maybe don't necessarily always associate as being like a you know it's not like a sandwich right but it is something that you would consume and and, and because of the form that it's in um, it could be shipped uh, you know uh, much longer distances uh, but then if you have something that is uh, yeah a bit more uh, ha yeah like I said has more of an expiration date um, it's going to be more regional, but I think you know most of the e-commerce businesses, at least that we work with, um, they're they're more, um, I guess, yeah, products that that have a larger shelf life and therefore they can be shipped uh, larger distances. Yes, that's definitely definitely good because then, of course, when you think of it, you and it's not only the the lifetime of the product you can then really expand even the market you can scale it up because uh, can imagine even if it's organic uh, the the amount of production you can scale it as soon as you notice that you're getting good demand and you can um, get as well resources at a profitable way that you can still make it viable business and still keep the marketing growing at the same time um have you seen in, in the current situation, have you seen some areas where you uh, notice, okay, this should be running, but it eventually uh, it takes longer to actually grow because maybe you have to adapt the strategies as certain products maybe do not have um, the awareness in the market that it needs? Well, I think that there... You know, there are some industries that uh, have gotten, you know, very competitive recently because uh, they've become very hot and trendy. Um, so, for example, like, mm -hmm. you know, I keep going back to CPD as, as one example, but um, it, you know, it's gotten uh, extremely competitive, whereas maybe a couple of years ago, nobody really knew what it was. And now everybody's launching their own sort of CBD brand. Um, and so it becomes more difficult uh, to get traction um, in, in those niches. Um, and then, you know, there are different types of, uh, I think, uh, fit, you know, fitness approaches. For example, I had uh, one, one, one client and it was, it was actually a fitness studio and they did something called like electroshock therapy. Uh, mm -hmm. or I think it's what or it, was, it was something, something like it, something like, or, uh, or electromuscular stim, uh, stimulation. It was essentially a combination of work, workout, but then having almost like electrodes kind of <laughs> shock uh the body uh it sounds worse than 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 it is i actually did it myself um i went to their studio in in new york and and essentially uh, i did one of the fitness classes and it's just supposed to kind of like stimulate the muscles uh, but anyway apparently it's something that i i think is a little more uh done in europe than it is in the u.s and so this is a case where it's you know everybody understands fitness and fitness studios and workout classes but the particular model of fitness that they were pursuing uh, was uh, quite different than than what people were used to, and so you're in a situation where um, maybe there are keywords that you know would make sense to rank for, but they don't have a lot of search volume. People aren't really kind of looking for them, um, and it becomes you know difficult in that case to you know to to, to grow a successful campaign. Yeah, especially that kind of business. Um, I suppose it might have been a franchise because I know these franchises in Europe and as well in South Africa, there's a French, uh, one of these franchise businesses that can be very, very profitable if you're doing the marketing right and you've got the right kind of clients. But uh, of course, it's a different kind of niche in the sports and wellness industry when you think of it. It's not the people who are just saying, looking for the sports center, the gym that they can pay for uh, $10 a month to go and, and do a bit of weightlifting and so on. It's a totally different kind of people you're addressing to, people who haven't got time, but they're willing to do something very unusual. But on the other hand, uh, what I see here especially, they often have the people then doing their workout in the window, in the shop window, 
And that might put somebody off. At least it would put me off. Um, a friend of mine in South Africa tested these products and he was quite, he, he liked it very much. But they have their totally different approach. They don't have people standing in the window because I can imagine it would be, even for them be quite awkward. So they have hmm. like a, uh, let's say, VIP service. So they actually come to the place of the VIP client and they do it with them there. So they at home the privacy and then afterwards they can go and shower and they don't have to go somewhere else or whatever they're ready to go to the office or anything um but it depends very much as well how you how you're marketing that and it can be a can be quite a challenge did you find a solution for the client honestly not really no we we we, we worked with them for a couple of months we we did some uh mm. we, we made a lot of efforts to uh do some website redesign and also um the user experience and and also the communication like um the messages that were being sent over text and newsletter try to kind of stimulate mm -hmm. the user base uh but we had a difficult time it was also kind of a difficult client to be honest um and mm. we you know we, we learned that, that that you know why probably like that type of uh, client and client service is not a good fit for our agency in the future. Yeah, that's, that can be a challenge as well, especially if it's uh, they haven't got the right budget, maybe not right mindset, or they're doing stuff that maybe doesn't quite fit with the rules on the platforms where you can advertise because you can't, of course, do everything with email and other stuff. There's a limitation. And especially such a thing that sounds a little bit like the electric <laughs> chair. <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> yeah. scaring for some people. And if you get it in the wrong context, the people are going to run away screaming. <laughs> That's for sure. But yeah, but there's quite quite some interesting stuff happening in, in fitness. Um, and especially as well, <laughs> a challenge for, for everybody who's trying to do some marketing, whether it's for a client or for one's own business to find ways to actually to grow and find that, especially with e-commerce. So there, there's so many platforms as well that you can use, like like WooCommerce or you go and use Shopify and other platforms that may be integrated. Yeah, I don't even, I don't know really whether you can offer CBD actually on Amazon. I, I don't think so. I'm not sure actually. I haven't. Uh, I haven't tried to purchase there, and perhaps that's uh, to the advantage of some of the sites that they don't have Amazon as a competitor. Yeah, because otherwise, usually it's. I think uh, the search product search is about seventy percent happens directly usually on Amazon nowadays, which wow. is really astonishing. Yeah, because you, whether you go and. Uh, buy some shoes or buy other stuff or any kind of uh, produce even this even these powders uh, that you use for uh, training and that for muscle powers and so on um, the products that come from the US as well that are sold as well here in Europe you can get them easily from Amazon even as a five kilo pot mm. and it's a great great stuff you can order them there but uh, all these other products uh, they're not there so there's there's theoretically a good opportunity just to find a way to stand out. Some some companies obviously are able to do quite a good job for them and, and find the niche where they where they are placed. So, um, what do you think is going to be uh, happening from your perspective on marketing innovation? What's going to be happening for the next six months when you look at what's be happening at the moment? Well, my hope is that uh, people put more emphasis on their digital marketing strategies. Uh, I think that there are a lot of businesses that were caught off guard uh, in the current pandemic um, and they didn't really have their website set up or set up properly and they weren't really prepared to to sell because they're uh, online because they were so used to having a storefront um, like maybe the the coffee shops down you know down the street. I mean I have a friend of a friend runs a coffee shop in in, in the uh in the city and uh you know they mm -hmm. could sell uh their their coffee products online but they're so used to just people kind of coming in um and sort of dining with them um but then that not being uh allowed uh, you know really kind of hurt sales um and while things appear to be kind of getting a little bit back to normal i still think there's a little bit of that you know ptsd that uh, people are going to say, okay, well, fool me once, you know, shame on me, but uh, time to kind of get things in order. So uh, I'm, I'm uh, sort of uh, optimistic that there's going to be a, a resurgence and, hey, I really got to get, you know, my website, um, you know, uh, back back in good shape and be ready to sell products online if, if something happens with the store, things like that. 
Yeah, and, and for instance, even if you look across the border, look over to places like even um, Canada in, in Toronto, for instance, the financial district, you've got those huge buildings with all these banks and you can go from building to building through the underground um, routes that they've got. They have huge malls under the buildings where you can get uh, your food and buy stuff. And now that, of course, all the bankers, the traders, all these... Um, administrative people and so on they're all working from home so the restaurants the little shops there they are hardly making a sale so that shows as well that all the commercial buildings in all different countries around and the, this, the the restaurants and the shops that live from people going to work living the day in their office it means of course for them a massive change so they'll have to decide okay am i be going to be able to keep that real estate property that I've got or move out with my shop, my restaurant, go and start something completely new. That's maybe going to take me in my life to the next level. And that's where I think as well, they definitely will have to start thinking, what do I want to do? And how do I want to get my marketing running? Because if nobody knows my new business, I'm going to sell anything, especially if you can do it from home as well. That's an advantage where you can focus your time on doing the marketing and doing the other stuff and at the same time maybe getting help from people who've been uh, doing this for many years and know the roundabouts of digital marketing nowadays, especially if somebody has, hasn't been doing anything of that. They need to be taken gradually inside and, and seen that as well that the mindset doesn't go crackers, especially <laughs> when uh, <laughs> the digital world isn't, isn't as normal as it usually would be. No, it, it isn't. Yeah, I think you're exactly right about that. Yeah. So, um, Dave, it was great having you here on the show. And if people want to get in contact with you or get to know more about you or your company, Shortlist.io, where can they go and get in contact and find out? Yeah, of course. Uh, anyone can shoot me an email to dave at shortlist.io um, or obviously visit the website. We also have a podcast called How We Solve. We talk about solving business mm -hmm. problems. So if you're enjoying this podcast, you might like that one too. Great. So, wonderful. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Christian, for having me. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of The Growth Zone with Christian Barge. Thank you for listening. Please leave a review or rating here on iTunes or on podchaser.com. Com. If you found the content helpful, then share it on social media. I would like to invite you to follow our show so that you don't miss the upcoming interviews with leaders in the market. Simply visit the website follow.prmediareach.com. I will be adding the link also to the description of this episode so that you just need to click on that link. For those of you who are listening and signing up to follow the show, I have reserved a free copy of the ultimate guide on content marketing. This is the strategy that got me top corporate clients like McDonald's, Linde, Hewlett Packard, Deutsche Bank, Volvo and many others. That strategy has been working for over 10 years. It also got me contracts with police, transport authorities, military and several universities and even leading research institutes. For sure, it also worked wonders as it got me many small, medium-sized entrepreneurs and enterprises as clients. And that even included international clients from all around the world. The link to sign up for our free broadcasting service and the guide is follow.prmediareach.com That will give you access to the most recent version of my ultimate guide on content marketing. You can follow me as well on Twitter by using the Twitter handle CAP Barge. That's spelled Charlie Alpha, Papa, Bravo, Alpha, Romeo, Tango, Sierra, Charlie. 
Hotel. Yes, that is C-A-P, Barge. Charlie, Alpha, Papa, Bravo, Alpha, Romeo, Tango, Sierra, Charlie, Hotel.